portrait of the painter Magdalena Frida Carmen Calo Calderon, simply called Frida Calo. Frida was born in the Blue House, the Casa Azul, in 1907, not far from Mexico City. Frida will falsify her date of birth as July 7, 1910, which coincides with the date of the Mexican Revolution. Like a family tree, she will paint her family with her Mexican and German grandparents. At six years old, Frida is victim of poliomyelitis, a trophy illness of her right leg. The children call her Frida's lame. But she is a very good student. She can pretend to a prestigious school to become a doctor. But while going to take a lesson, the bus is hit by a tram. She is seriously injured, broken bones, bedridden for three months. The pelvis, ribs and vertebral column are broken, plus 11 fractures to his right leg. She will immortalize her accident by painting the broken column. Stuck in her bed, her parents offer her a painting set with a mirror on the ceiling and a custom easel. Frida also suffered from inelegant teeth. She avoids big smiles in her self-portraits which explains this austere pose that she took on her painting. In 1928, she joined the Mexican Communist Party and wants to participate in the emancipation of women in a country that is a way too macho. Inside her is burning a desire for travel, studies and freedom. The same year, she met the painter Diego Rivera. She shows him her drawings he finds her talent. They fall in love and get married the following year. Diego will go to San Francisco for a mural painting and takes Frida with him. She discovers the world of artists and tries to have a child from Diego. But miscarriages follow because of a terrible accident. She fell alone and is homesick. She wants to go home. 1935, Frida discovers that her husband, Diego, is having an affair with her sister, Christina. Hurt, she will seek for revenge, um, for example, with Leon Trotsky in political asylum in Mexico at this time. André Breton will say that Frida Kahlo's art is a ribbon around a bomb. She will embody the feminist icon of Mexico and sexual freedom with Josephine Baker, for example. But her everyday life is a fight against the pain. A life in a wheelchair, even for painting exhibitions. And she will write Viva la Vida on her last painting, but also suggest a drug overdose in her last diary drawing in July 54. She will stay a long time in the shadow of Diego Rivera, will finally obtain recognition in the 70s then a global aura thereafter and will become the famous Mexican woman painter with a mono eyebrow. <laughs>